How's everybody, how's everybody doing today? Make it one piece? Ish? Fantastic. Uh, welcome to MXD. My name's Chris Dufour. Uh, I'm here with a fantastic team of people who are putting this Quantum Manufacturing Summit event on. Uh, I wanted to make a couple of quick administrative remarks to get us started for the day, and then we're going to jump into a pretty packed agenda of some fun things to talk about uh, today. So again, I want to I want to extend a welcome on behalf of all of us that work here at MXD. Uh, a couple of very simple uh, admin things I'd like to mention very first. If you're looking for restrooms, uh, there is a women's room right outside the doors here. On the other side of whatever that is, the theater over there, there's the, is the men's room. Uh, if if we also we also have some other restrooms down this way. Uh, if you're having trouble, if you need uh, a private room, if you need any other type of special accommodation, please grab any one of us with the, uh, the MXD badge on. Some of us have uh, a couple of lanyards. You can look for that very sexy logo right there. Uh, I'm sorry? I'm... Okay, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Still staying too close to speakers and IEDs all my life. Uh, 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 so that, that's restrooms. Please help yourself to as much uh, refreshments that we've got out there. We're going to have a lunch uh, a little bit later on, but any of the, uh, all that is out there for you. I don't care if you run away with, uh, with, with the water and everything, but it'll be very, very tasty, I promise. Uh, let's see here. I do want to mention very quickly, uh, for those of you who have not been to MXD before, or for those of you who have not been here in a while, we will be doing a factory floor tour uh, a little bit later on. There is a sign-up sheet in the atrium where you checked in uh, for security and picked up your badges. So if you're interested in going, please make sure that you go out at one of the breaks uh, and sign up for that tour. It's a good time. I promise you I've been on it several, several times. I learn something new every time I go through. So uh, good times. Uh, those things being said and being equal, let's go ahead and kick off. Uh, if, again, I, I want to reiterate, if anybody's got any problems, issues, please come and see me, uh, Lori, anybody else with an MXD badge on. We're here to help you and have, make sure you had a good time today. Those things being said, I'm going to turn it over to our CEO, Mr. Berardino Barada, to get us started. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Anyone coming from the south, you're welcome for escaping the heat. So we, we planned the weather just for you. So I'm Berardino Barada. I'm the CEO of MXD, and I have the pleasure of, uh, and the honor of running this incredible organization. Um, Quantum computing promises an unparalleled capability to solve problems that today are considered unsolvable. And when you think about it, from optimizing supply chains to advancing material science, the applications truly are limitless, and that's what we're here to discuss today. Under the leadership of our esteemed governor, Illinois has become a beacon of innovation and sustainability. Governor Pritzker's unwavering support to innovation and technology advancement, including cutting-edge technologies like quantum computing, artificial intelligence, and electric vehicles is really driving economic growth in the state and creating high-paying, wonderful jobs for Illinoisans. Governor Pritzker's vision is not just to try to keep pace with the technology, but really to truly be a leader within this space, to have this state truly lead in the execution of it. His commitment to fostering a collaborative environment where industry, academia, and government work together to solve these challenges and to set new standards for success. Please welcome me in inviting Governor Pritzker and welcoming him to the stage. Well, good morning, everyone. It, it, oh, we can do better than that. Good morning. There we go. Love to hear that. Uh, well, I know there's coffee somewhere in the back, so. Um, it really is an honor to be here to, to kick off this inaugural quantum technology Technology Summit. Uh, I am proud to welcome all of you who are from out of town to this historic conference here in Chicago, and of course all of you who are from in town. Uh, this is an, an amazing space if you haven't spent time here or uh, gotten to know the people, the members, uh, the, the, the people who work here every single day. Uh, so do take that opportunity. I want to thank our hosts, MXD and uh, the Block Quantum Tech Hub, for hosting us and for providing a platform for these vital conversations about a topic that is so important to our future. And to MXD CEO Berardino, thank you very much. Um, thanks for your leadership. Thanks for helping to make MXD such a, a huge success for Chicago and for Illinois. 
Uh, the quantum revolution is upon us, I and mean, we are here. And what seemed like an abstract and really uh, out of reach uh, technology just a few years ago has quickly become uh, among the defining technological questions of this generation, you might say that this has been a 30-year overnight success. Uh, while the U.S. is um, uh, in a worldwide competition against our uh, national, sorry, w with our national security and economic rivals, uh, here in Illinois, our research institutions are giving our nation a big leg up in that competition. <clears throat> our world-class research institutions like uh, the Argonne National Laboratory, like Fermilab, University of Chicago, University of Illinois, and Northwestern, among a number of others, have produced some of the most advanced quantum and AI research in the entire world. And five years ago, our state began investing in the effort to make us a global hub for quantum science and commercialization. That catalyzed Illinois winning the largest and the most federal grants in quantum research. That's a big deal when you think about uh, the competition among the states in the United States. It says a lot about the quality of the people that we have here and the institutions that we have here, the recognition that we're getting in Washington, D.C., and of course, um, our great senior United States Senator, who I'll introduce in a little bit, who helped to bring funding for those grants and, and much more. Uh, we are still among the only states as a state government to invest in and actualize a plan for quantum future for the people of our state. Harnessing the full power of this transformative technology takes more than just money. It requires coordination between public and private sectors, between information uh, uh, providers and uh, research institutions. It, it requires human capital development. It requires venture capital investment, a dedication to advanced manufacturing, uh, development of commercial applications, and a concerted focus on cybersecurity. And I want to say that I, I feel like uh, it's Groundhog Day because a number of years ago, I was involved in helping to lift Chicago uh, in the information technology world uh, to make sure that, you know, we had really missed out on an opportunity a number of years ago in the, back in the early 90s, late 80s, when at the University of Illinois with a supercomputer, with ARPANET connecting, uh, with lots of PhDs and others who were playing around with this thing that nobody really had a name for other than ARPANET that became the internet. We had the opportunity in Illinois to become the leader, the focus, sort of the Silicon Valley uh, of the new internet age. And we missed that opportunity because so much of the technology that got developed there and many of the companies, YouTube, PayPal, we can go through a list of companies that got started. You know, the Mosaic was the first browser, graphic, inline graphic browser that anybody could really use that popularized the internet. Unfortunately, all those companies and the technology and the people who developed it kind of got up and left. And they left because they were attracted to other places who were providing a welcoming environment and capital and where the government was you know, helping them to succeed. So with the advent of quantum, I, I wanna be clear to all of you, we're not gonna miss that opportunity. Um, but I was involved in trying to lift Chicago up from being kind of in the mid-teens in terms of our ranking among cities in the United States for internet and information technology. Um, and we succeeded in some ways. We certainly are in the top 10 now for, for cities uh, in the country in the development of the internet. But in quantum, we're number one. And we're gonna stay number one because we're gonna make these kinds of investments. Harnessing the power of this transformative technology though takes much more than just money. Um, and broadly speaking, what it takes is a quantum ecosystem. And those are the things that we are intending to and are in the process of building here in Chicago and Illinois. 
driven in part by the support and power of the block and of duality. Chicago is already home to um, many of the major and developing players in quantum. Some of the startups that you may know and have heard of, and some of you may come from, uh, Inflection, MemQ, QBraid, D-Wave, uh, AeroQ, and those are just a few. There are many others, and we want players from around the country from startups to Fortune 50 tech companies to build their futures here in the Chicagoland. We have all the necessary ingredients, from talented scientists to startup capital to the best equipped labs in the entire world and the largest companies in the United States. We're the second largest uh, home of Fortune 500 companies in the entire country. Uh, what the ecosystem needs is uh, sometimes for government to step out of the way. Uh, but also for government to remove some of the barriers, like the, the massive investment in cryo facilities and fabrication labs that uh, many of the uh, uh, quantum hardware companies um, need and uh, normally require, uh, and, but it's too expensive for each individual company, right? And, and they need a home for collaboration and partnership. So six months ago, I proposed that we tackle these problems. And I went to the General Assembly here in Illinois uh, and asked that we build all of what I just described uh, on an independent quantum campus right here in the Chicago area, a place where the sharpest minds in quantum could come together to shape the future of the industry, catalyzing private capital to come here and even more public investment into this burgeoning field. I even proposed a series of tax incentives and an international quantum enterprise zone. Well, the General Assembly approved all of that in May. And uh, now uh, we have a $500 million investment that's gonna be planted here in the Chicago area. We'll be making more and more uh, announcements about that uh, relatively soon and about companies that we're partnering with. But just two days ago, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, um, became our very first partner. Uh, they came to us a couple of months ago when they heard we were trying to do this, uh, and we started discussing it. And what they've announced two days ago with us is that they'll commit up to $140 million to locate a joint quantum proving ground on our quantum campus where quantum computing prototypes will be tested and evaluated as part of DARPA's quantitative, sorry, quantum benchmarking initiative. So we're, we're gonna host now on that campus uh, the most innovative, well, you know, uh, renowned federal agency in innovation. Um, the one, the, the same organization that's, that was responsible for things like, well, ARPANET, um, and things like uh, the development of GPS and weather satellites, and there's a whole big long list of, of technologies that they began to develop uh, often for defense purposes, but that became technologies that all of us uh, use in everyday life. Quantum has the potential to revolutionize the world as we know it and unlock scientific and technological progress beyond our expectations with applications from cybersecurity to pharmaceuticals to manufacturing and beyond. I had someone describe to me just the other day the opportunity to take what, what could otherwise take 10 or 15 years to develop a cure for a, a, a challenging disease that take that time frame that often is just test, 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 you know, 5,000 molecules uh, over a long period of time and be able to do something that otherwise took 10 or 15 years in three weeks. So imagine what we would be able to do if we were the hub of quantum technology in the country. We have an opportunity and a responsibility to wield this great technology for the betterment of the entire world. Illinois has fast become a leading quantum ecosystem with fast developing infrastructure. Um, major players in government, finance, business, and academia are making Illinois the epicenter of the quantum revolution. I want to extend an invitation to all of you to be part of that very same thing. For those of you who are here in town to help gather the uh, ecosystem that we're, we've been putting together and be part of that. For those of you from out of town, move to Chicago. Um, 
uh, become part of our ecosystem. We're not only the best state in the nation to grow your quantum enterprise, we're also the best place in the country to live, work, uh, play, and raise a family. And so I, I am grateful to all of you for being here, for joining us. Thank you for uh, being a part of uh, today's uh, enterprise. Uh, and to all of you who are visiting, uh, make sure you try Chicago pizza. If you haven't done that before, enjoy a Chicago hot dog. Uh, but most of all, enjoy your stay in our great state. Thank you. Oh, I almost missed the opportunity to introduce really one of the great statesmen in our country who, who happens also to be our senior United States Senator and someone who provides the funding. I mean, he fights for the funding that makes everything that I just talk about possible. That DARPA you know, succeeds, uh, the new technologies that, that we want developed by the federal government succeeding, all is a result of work that gets done on the Senate floor by uh, the, uh, the Senate Majority Whip uh, and our longtime and great, powerful uh, Senator Dick Durbin. <laughs>